GPS approaches are available at nearly every airport in the U.S. and can provide both lateral and vertical approach guidance comparable to the precision of an ILS approach. While all GPS approaches have the same RNAV GPS title at the top of the procedure, each will have some differences in the minima section at the bottom of the chart. Options here include LPV, LNAV VNAV, or LNAV. LNAV is the most basic type of approach and provides left-right course guidance to the runway and relies on step-down fixes for descents down to the MDA. The missed approach point is identified by a waypoint at the end of the final approach course. On the other end of the spectrum is the LPV approach, which is the most precise type of GPS approach available. LPV stands for Localizer Performance with Vertical Guidance and provides both lateral and vertical guidance down to the runway, similar to an ILS. This requires a WAS-capable GPS like the Garmin 430W or GTN650 and uses the WAS correction signals to generate an electronic glide slope, providing a stabilized approach path to the runway. The lateral course is more precise than an LNAV-only approach, since the course is angular like a localizer, meaning the final approach course width automatically narrows as you approach the runway. Another significant difference between LNAV and LPV is that the LPV approach terminates at a decision altitude, or DA, whereas the LNAV relies on a minimum descent altitude, or MDA. This means that like with an ILS, when you reach this decision altitude listed on the chart while flying the glide path, you must have the required visibility and runway environment in sight to continue to landing. If the runway is not in sight at the decision altitude, you must execute the missed approach immediately. Now let's look at the RNAV GPS approach to runway 29 at the Butler County Airport in Hamilton, Ohio, which includes LPV and LNAV VNAV options in addition to LNAV. If you were flying with a non WAS GPS, you would be limited to using the LNAV or circling minima. Our Garmin GTN 650 is approved for the LPV approach, and that is what we will plan to fly. Looking at the notes at the top of the chart, you may notice something called Barrow VNAV mentioned. This is a non WAS technology that pertains to high performance airplanes flying the LNAV VNAV version of the approach. The profile view shows a step down altitude at Punu. The asterisk beside the altitude points to a note indicating that it applies to LNAV only. Flying the LPV approach, we don't need to be concerned with the altitude unless the navigator downgrades the approach. This could occur during the RAIM check due to a WAS outage or anomaly. Our decision altitude for the LPV approach is 944 feet. This puts us 325 feet above the touchdown zone elevation. The LNAV MDA is nearly 200 feet higher. As we approach Hamilton from the east, Press the Procedure button on the home screen. Tap the Approach button, and then verify that Hamilton is the active airport on the Approach Selection screen. Tap the Approach button next to the airport name, and select the RNAV29 approach from the list of options. Next, tap the Transition button, and select Vectors. Since we are currently on a vector heading from ATC, we'll choose the option to Load Approach and Activate. This will display the final approach course in magenta on the moving map screen, with the final approach fix as the next waypoint in the flight plan. Since we are getting vectors and there is no need for a course reversal, we will disregard the holding pattern at Bernie. After intercepting the final approach course and on the intermediate leg inside of Bernie, we can descend to 2,600. The approach is active as shown by the LPV on the screen, and the glide slope needle has come alive. We will intercept and track the glide slope at Holger. Like an ILS, we set a descent rate and power setting to keep the glide slope needle centered. Reaching the 944-foot decision altitude, we must decide if we can continue and land or if a missed approach is in order.
In our case, the runway environment is in sight, and we can proceed with landing. If the runway is not in sight at the decision altitude, you must immediately initiate a climb and follow the missed approach instructions, just like an ILS. That wraps up our review of GPS procedures and approaches. As you saw, a modern GPS navigator can make these operations very simple if you know how to use the unit. Take some time to learn your box well. It'll make its use under IFR much more relaxed and effective.